we'll wait for some people to join for I introduce myself. Give it a couple of seconds. All right. Hello, welcome. My name is Jaina. Um, I'm a campus ambassador for the Office of Admissions. Um, and today we are going to be taking you on a little tour of the Dream Center on campus and also um, the Path Scholar. So we'll learn a little bit about those resources on campus um, and a little bit about myself before we get started. Uh, my name is Jaina. I'm a music industry major at Chico State um, and I'm going into my very last semester this semester. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and invite um, the Dream Center to go live with us. Hello. Hello. How, how are, are you? you? <laughs> Great. How are you doing? And I'm remind me how to um, pronounce your name. Uh, my name is Teresita Curiel. Nice to meet you. I'm Jaina. Um, so we're just going to be asking you a couple of questions about um, what students should know about the Dream Center. Okay. Um, so first of all, if you could just introduce, introduce yourself a little bit and then what is the program that you represent on campus? So today I'm representing the Chico State Dream Center. And again, my name is Teresita Curiel. I currently have the honor and privilege to serve as the director of the center at Chico State. Um, and so the Dream Center, we are a student success and resource center for the hundreds of undocumented students currently enrolled at Chico State. In addition to an uncountable number of students who are from mixed status families. And what does that mean? That means that perhaps um, these students are U.S. citizens or legal permanent residents, but they might have an undocumented individual very close in their lives. And so we are a resource center for them as well. Awesome. And I don't think I mentioned to our students that are watching right now, feel free to shoot us questions um, and we can try to answer those as well. So do not be shy. Send us a question and the comments are um, through the question feature. Um, so. Could you just go in a little bit more about what services you offer for students? So again, we serve um, a special segment of the population, specifically undocumented and students from mixed status families. And I should probably take some time to explain that not everyone, um, there's many terms in and around this population. So I, send un I tend to say undocumented because that encompasses everyone, but some people might um, prefer to use dream students. Some people might, uh, students might prefer AB 540 students, DACA students. Um, and so there's a lot of terms that could be used, but in the end, it's undocumented students. Um, and the services that we do is that, again, we serve as a resource center and also a student success center. So our objective is really to make the Chico State experience as positive and as equitable as we possibly can for this populations. And so what does that mean? We actually have designated campus liaisons in all the critical services for our students. So we have um, a contact person and direct connection to academic advising, financial aid, the wellness center, um, the counseling center that is, um, the pantry, on on and so forth. And, and we have wonderful connections all over the campus, but we tend to have really close connections in services that our dream students are very um, benefited by and also engage with on our campus. Um, we also have a textbook and calculator loan programs. Um, I currently have an application out for textbook assistant grant, micro grants. Um, we do empowerment, advocacy, um, policy updates. There's a lot of governmental policies that impact this population. And so we wanna make sure that we're up to date on kind of what's happening um, in government or on uh, governmental policies that are impacting this population. Um, we also, and this is an exciting part because we're only about a year into this service, is that we offer free immigration legal services, not only to students enrolled at Chico State, but to faculty and staff also. And something that's new this semester and year is that if you are a Chico State student, it doesn't matter if you're undocumented or not, you can take advantage of these immigration legal services, but now so can your immediate family members. And this is a game changer. These, again, these are free. We have a designated immigration attorney 
through our partnership with um, our organization known for SHERLA, Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights. And so we're excited that that's uh, been a successful one year in and we're expanding to serve um, immediate family members. Um, immediate family members being um, uh, parents and or siblings of our Chico State students. In fact, if there's prospective students watching, you know, I want to also let you know that this service is available at Chico State, but at every California State University in the state of California. Awesome, I definitely didn't know that. So that is great to know. Um, and we did get a question in the question box and I just wanted to, um, and it was about a general question about transfer. So leave your questions mostly about the Dream Center for now. Sorry, I'm not gonna get to that because it's a little bit off topic, um, but you feel free to um, contact the Office of Admissions. You can email them at info at csuchico.edu. So sorry for that little side note there, but just- No, and that's your... okay. And even if, if, if contact admissions, they're, they're the experts in the admissions. Um, if you are a Dream student thinking about Chico State, um, after you contact admissions, please contact the Dream Center too, and we can talk about um, in further conversation what exactly we have to offer you and um, and how you can maybe go about paying for college because that's one of the biggest challenges that this population faces is that um, they don't have the uh, same access to financial aid as the general population. And so we work really hard to identify scholarship opportunities. We work carefully with um, certain consulates in the area to open up opportunities um, for, for grants and what have you. And we're constantly looking for opportunities and trying to make the experience at Chico State a little less expensive too. And there's a multiple ways we do that. So yeah, definitely reach out to admissions, but also reach out to Dream Center, <laughs> even if you're Good thinking enough. about it. <laughs> awesome. All right, so my next question that I had was who can use those services? And you already kind of answered that. Students, uh, DACA students, and then students with undocumented family members. I guess I would go on to add, is there anyone, or is there students that can be involved in the service that maybe don't identify with that? Of course, you know, our primary focus is undocumented and students from mixed status families. But really, if you walk through our front door when we're back in business in the face-to-face -face format, we're gonna help you regardless of who you are. But a lot of our programming and services are specifically tailored for the undocumented student population. And so. Uh oh, I think we lost you there for a second. <laughs> um. I am not able to hear her right now. Is it just me? <laughs> Should I? Maybe I'll close and invite her back real fast. Oh, I don't Are know. Are you disconnected? Is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm on campus. I'm actually, I'm, I'm on campus, so I should be disconnected. <laughs> okay, maybe it was my end. I'm not sure if um, people watching were able to catch that. Um, but basically what I got from what you said is you are there to help anyone that, um, walks into your office, um, mostly students that are obviously- yeah, but most of our programming is very tailored to the undocumented student. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, um, students should know that when students walk into the Dream Center, um, no one's going to ask what your status is um, very intentionally, um, but a lot of our programming um, is very, very much tailored to the undocumented student. Okay, good to know. All right, and when should people contact you? Is now a good time? Uh, yeah, any time is a good time. Mm -hmm. So the best way to in in our curl, in our current virtual reality, the best way to get a hold of us is uh, Dream Center at csuchico.edu. Or you can all, I'm gonna put a little sign up, and I hope it comes up for you. I can pin that, that come up in mirror image. Yes, it does. So Dream Center okay. at csuchico. Alrighty, so Dream Center at that's our email. You can also call us, and guess what? You call us. It goes into an audio voicemail, into our email immediately. We invite you to check out our, our website at the Chico State website at uh, backslash Dream Center. And also, very new, we're still expanding. We now have Instagram. And so Ooh. we're keeping that off, <laughs> and we hope that goes well. But again, do reach out. Um, and I'm happy to entertain um, questions and make connections. If you're thinking about Chico State, I, I want to talk to you about Chico State. But if you are also thinking about another CSU, I'm happy to uh, make a referral as well. You also want to speak to this person at that campus. Cool. 
All right. So obviously things look a little bit different this year. So could you just go into explaining on what's uh, what will the experience be like um, to come into the Dream Center virtually um, this fall semester? Well, it's been a quite a busy summer. Um, we had some policy changes uh, come across, some unfortunate policy changes in the federal government um, and, and changes to the DACA program, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrival. So we did a lot of programming in the summer. And I use that as an example because um, we have to keep up to date on the policy information. But we're, our, we've already been so busy. We're doing a lot of uh, policy workshops in the summer. We did our first ever dream student orientation. Um, we're about to do a dream student welcome reception virtually um, where we invite where the president is going to come and a couple of cabinet members and hopefully students and faculty and staff and really welcome the new dream student population to Chico State. Um, we're going to offer ally trainings virtually. Um, and again, we're going to conduct workshops um, academically related. Uh, career related, socially related, um, all in a virtual format. Because one of the important things at the end of the day is the, the big purpose and mission of the Dream Center is to build community within the Dream students on our campus. And we're gonna do our best attempt to do that virtually. Awesome, great to know. So we really have a couple more questions. So if you have questions, feel free to send those now. Um, you kind of went into what's going to be new this year, but is there anything else that you wanted to add before um, we switch it on over to the past scholars? Well, if there's any DACA students that are listening or watching, um, I really encourage, I really encourage uh, to continue renewing your DACA and try to do it at least six to five months before it's going to expire. If you are already enrolled at Chico State, connect with the Dream Center and with our immigration uh, attorney to, to do that efficiently. So, um, and again, the new immigration legal services expanding to family members, that's, that's a big deal. And um, again, we're going to try to do our best to engage with students as best we can virtually. And we want to hear from students, um, you know, connection means two ways. And so um, we'd love to hear ideas from students as well. Um, we don't have it all figured out, but we're going to give it a, a good old college <laughs> try. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. So I don't think we have any questions, but there you have it, folks. There are so many amazing services that you can utilize through the Dream Center. Um, so do not be afraid to reach out. Their email is pinned, dreamcenter at csuchico.edu. And then there's a phone number as well. Um, so do not be shy. Get connected with the Dream Center. Thank you so much for what you do for our campus. And I'm going to go ahead and kick you out All now right. and get the Thank you. on here. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and now we are going to invite the past scholars on and do a very similar interview with Marina. Don't be shy. Send us your questions about the past scholars office. Hello. Welcome. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Um, could you just quickly introduce yourself to our audience here and then let us know a little bit about the program that you're representing today? Yeah, well, it's good to be with y'all today. Um, my name is Marina Lamelli Fox, and I'm the program coordinator for Path Scholars at Chico State. And I was listening to Teresita and um, with the Dream Center. Um, we have so many similarities. We actually share a physical space uh, on campus. So, um, so yeah, Teresita and I work really close. Um, together with uh programming and um you know students coming into the center so it was nice to see her awesome um and what services do you offer for students so um essentially well maybe i should answer the question about who we serve first and then i'll tell you what we do for sure yeah <laughs> um so we work with students who have a background in foster care and who have an unaccompanied homeless um, as a minor background. So um, students who were at some point in their um, childhood in foster care, sometimes they were in foster care till they reached the age of 18. Um, and now with some um, California legislation in 2012, actually, they um, change things to make kind of that age of adulthood and aging out, if you've heard that term before. Um, so now young people age out at 21 as opposed to 18. So 
that's been a really great um, policy that was implemented by lots of really great folks, but I won't get into that. Um, and so, yeah, there's students who have been in foster care for a short amount of time when they were, you know, younger, and then um, lots of different um, variations <laughs> happen. Um, and then sometimes, you know, they're, they go back home to their biological family. Um, other times they um, reach uh, 18 and 21 still in the system. So um, that's kind of the foster care side. And then um, a kind of a rising group of students that, that I've seen over the years is um, young people who are unaccompanied and homeless. So basically they're homeless while they're still minors before they're 18. Um, and they're kind of on their own. They don't have a parent or guardian um, looking after them. So uh, Path Scholars has been in um, kind of here at Chico State since um, 2014. And so it's been six years, which is incredible. Um, and other CSUs have programs, typically they're called Guardian Scholars. And uh, when Chico State started a program back in 2014, um, actually students got to select what they wanted to name the program because for some reason, I just didn't love Guardian Scholars. <laughs> I just don't love that name. Um, and so I put it out to the students and they selected PATH Scholars and PATH is actually an acronym for Promoting Achievement Through Hope. And um, yeah, so that's kind of how, how PATH Scholars came to be at Chico State. And so then the services that we offer, um, okay, well, let me even say this before I say that. So uh, the research shows that only three to four percent of foster youth graduate with a bachelor's degree. So it's a really small population of students. And so that's one of the reasons that a program like this is so uh, essential for students and their success. Um, and really getting them, it's threefold. So getting them to college, keeping them um, in their courses, and then graduating. So ultimately that's our goal. And the short answer to your question is we, um, we help with anything. Students just need to let us know what their challenge is, what the barrier is, and then we can help them kind of figure out, you know, okay, you need to talk to this person or let's reach out to this organization or agency um, and kind of help them sort out uh, their their challenge. Um, and so kind of like what Teresita was saying, uh, we do lots of similar things, um, just with a different population of students. So um, one of the cool things as we're, you know, in the first week of classes this week, we uh, welcomed some new students into our program. And that was kind of over the summer of, you know, um, getting them to apply, letting them know about Path Scholars, getting them to apply. And then, um, so our new students received welcome packages. And so that's something that we do um, over the summer and with the campus community, but also with social media and um, sharing all over just our local community. And um, we do a donation drive. And so we get items donated from all over, um, again, campus people, but also um, community members. And so they donated a variety of things like laundry baskets, bedding, hygiene products, um, school supplies. And so we put some baskets together and uh, provided those to our students last week. And so actually we're still kind of giving those out um, over this week. And so, so welcome packages, we support students with textbook funds. We actually partnered with uh, the AS Bookstore and we got a really nice grant last year. And um, so students can get some, some funding to help purchase textbooks. Um, we too, as Teresita mentioned with the Dream Center, we also have department liaisons. 
And that is major uh, because a lot of students, again, they really connect with us in Path Scholars and that, you know, that trust is really formed. And, and so they come to us and say, you know, my financial aid didn't come on Thursday and uh, I still owe $3,900 on my student account. And, you know, that may as well be a, a million dollars because it, you know, it's really scary to see that like past due. <laughs> And so anyway, then we'll connect them. Okay, well, Beppe is our liaison and financial aid. You know, let's get you connected and then really kind of help them sort through that issue and whatever's happening with their financial aid. Awesome. Um, yeah, and so, um, so yeah, just breaking down barriers, connecting them with resources. Um, and again, also like Teresita mentioned, really creating that sense of belonging um, and having them feel like, you know, they do belong here at Chico State, they do have a place here. Um, you know, there's lots of people that care about them and want to see them succeed. And, and so that's really, I think, a big part of our, our program goal. Awesome. So my next question would be, um, when should people contact you? I know you mentioned um, an application process. So maybe if you could Tell us a little bit about that and when you can apply as well for prospective students or maybe students that didn't know about this program until now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so typically students will, when they apply to Chico State or any other CSU on the Cal State or the Cal State Apply application, um, uh, it does ask the question if you have, um, if you're a former foster youth or an unaccompanied homeless minor. And so if students do self identify, then that gets, they get flagged in our system with um, Chico State admissions, um, as well as um, with us. And so we can reach out to them via email, um, whatever they have listed in their portal, we can call them. Um, most of the time students don't self report because there's a lot of stigma I know a lot of students who um, come from foster care, they just kind of want to be done with that whole scene. And so, you know, they say, okay, well, I'm not going to mark that because I'm going to go into my college adventure and, you know, redefine myself, which is amazing. Um, but there are a lot of resources and benefits that students can get uh, if they, you know, report as a former foster youth or unaccompanied homeless. So, um, so if they don't self-identify, then um, they can get connected with us at any point in their Chico State career. Um, we've had a lot of referrals from other students. So some students who are a current past scholar and they'll have a friend and then they get to know them and say, oh, you have a foster care background. Oh, did you know about past scholars? And so they get them connected. Um, we have a website, a Chico State website, csu, um, chico.edu forward slash foster youth, and students can um, just reach out to us at a lot of Guardian Scholars programs at other CSUs. They're connected with EOP, and as many of you know, EOP is an admissions program, and so you have to get in, you know, when you apply to Chico State. Um, thankfully for um, for us and our students, students can apply and be part of Path Scholars at any point in their Chico State career. So, so yeah, they just have to reach out to us and um, there is a verification process that we can help them with. And so um, they have to have a letter or some kind of documentation that they were in the system or they were unaccompanied homeless. And we have some really easy ways to get that um, documentation and help the students get that if they don't have it already. Typically, they, they'll they have it. So the process is pretty simple. Awesome. Um, so I know you mentioned a little bit about sending packages out to students as a kind of a welcome for the first week um, since we're, you know, in this um, interesting situation. So what else is, what is the program going to look like now that we're all online for school? Yeah, so we have um, adjusted just like everybody else, and we're doing, you know, phone calls, 
uh, we text a lot. I mean, students are, that's like the best way to uh, talk to students is via text. So um, texting, lots of Zoom appointments. Uh, we have Zoom uh, drop-in hours this week just to, you know, catch as many students as, um, as needed. Um, email, so all the different, you know, kind of uh, communication formats we're using it all so uh, social media has been kind of a bigger uh, thing now that we're in this you know virtual reality so yeah just any way that we can get uh, connected and you know meet with students and zoom maybe with um, our academic advising liaison and so still keeping that that uh, social connection. Awesome. And what else is new for this year? Anything um, new with the Path Scholars? <laughs> um, well, I will add, actually, I'll do a shout out right now. I don't know how many people are watching, but, um, uh, and I don't know if you all have talked about this, uh, apparently Chico State. Well, every year we get those student planners. And so um, I know that there's tons of those and so I, I got my hands on some of them and I'm going to be on campus on Thursday. What's today? Tuesday. So I'll be there on Thursday from 1230 to 1 around in that time frame. And so I'm hoping that um, some of our students will come by and pick up one of those student planners. And of course, all um, with the safety protocols, I'll be wearing my mask and, um, you know, physically distancing. But doing, you know, some of that in person, um, that's how we did the welcome packages. Students came by and picked it up from um, Miriam Library, the building, which is where our center is. And um, so, yeah, just trying to continue to provide those resources and items to students, um, doing that as much as possible. And, and again, doing just a lot of virtual uh, social groups, because again, that's, you know, something that we do in the, in, in normal life. <laughs> we, uh, we do a lot of outings and, you know, we have dinners as a group. We'll go to, you know, downtown Chico and um, just because it's close. And uh, we've had groups up to 30 students, which has been super amazing. We've been to like Chata Thai and um, I'm totally blanking on some of the other restaurants because I haven't been there in so long. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot what they're called. But um Anyway, and so like we would go to some of the Laxon shows. And so just again, those get togethers and having fun together is really, I think, an essential component to our program. And since we can't do that right now, um, you know, we're finding other ways to keep students engaged and um, do like we had a, a trivia night um, using Kahoot and that was a lot of fun actually. Um, and so again, just some of the, we had a scavenger hunt and it was like finding items, uh, in your home. And so that was also a lot of fun. <laughs> Love it. Um, yeah. you just have an email address, um, and I can pin so that people know where to find you or how to get in yeah. contact with you? Yeah. So, um, the best way would probably be to email me directly and, um, do I just tell you or should I put it yeah, in the comment? Yeah, you can put it in that comment too and I can also pin that so okay. everyone can see that. Um, what, let's see if I can multitask. So while I <laughs> put this in here, I will say, so as I mentioned before that I um, started the program back in 2014. And so all this time I have been a one person show <laughs> And that's been fun, but kind of challenging. And um, so in March of this year, we actually, okay, I just put my email in there. Um, we, the, the university has been really supportive of Path Scholars and our student group. And so we were, able, we got some funding to hire an additional uh, professional staff. And so in March, uh, 
Dawn Carini was hired and she's been incredible with doing all kinds of work and supporting the program and just we're, we're really enhancing what we're able to do with the students and so that's been um, kind of a game changer in terms of just what we're able to provide to students so that's been very positive and I'm really grateful to the university you know for supporting us and because I mean we do have a small a smaller population right now we have probably about 75 students that we're working with and um, as we continue we're gonna build that up more again now that um, it's Dawn and I doing this together so uh, we're hoping to serve First of all, I think to serve our current students to the best of our ability and then to really expand and, and then serve more students. So, because I do think there are a lot of students who just don't reach out for help or um, they don't know about our program. And so the more we can do to, you know, put the word out and promote it and educate students on what kind of services they get. I mean, they get priority registration uh, that's a really big deal for students registering, mm -hmm. you know, before most students, um, all kinds of support that they can get. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Um, students feel free to email the path scholars with the email that I just pinned, um, from their Instagram account. So do not be shy to send them an email, uh, learn a little bit more about their program. Um, but thank you so much, Marina, and thank you so much for what you do and talking to us about it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. And I'll just go ahead and sign off here. Um, another quick thank you to Teresita from the Dream Center um, for being on here um, a little bit earlier. And their um, email address is dreamcenter at csuchico.edu. So do not be afraid to reach out. And um, yeah, I'm going to end it there. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Bye, for everybody. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. <laughs>